Hi, my name is Kathleen and I am a physical therapist and have experienced runners or leg dystonia. I wanted to share a little of my personal experience with the medical system in treatment and hopefully offer an alternative perspective on treatment for dystonia. So my symptoms began in 2018 and at that time there really wasn't much out there on dystonia and as far as treatment goes, the options were to either have Botox injected into the muscles to paralyze them, to take a prescription drug. Oftentimes they were drugs prescribed for other movement disorders or other muscular conditions. And third, you could get brain surgery in the more severe cases. So that year in 2018, I accepted to be a case study at the NIH and I was hopeful that maybe they would have some alternative treatments or some resources that might be able to help me with my symptoms. So I went there and they did a full physical exam. They, did, they took a full history. And at the conclusion of the day, they pretty much told me that if I was interested, I could be enrolled in a clinical trial and take the prescription drug Cinemet, which was oftentimes prescribed for patients affected by Parkinson's disease. So naturally I declined because I really was looking for something more holistic or something that I was hopeful that maybe they would have other studies that were using neuro, more neuroplastic treatments. And I was disappointed because there really weren't, it didn't appear that there were really any other options for me. So fast forward several months later, at this point, my symptoms had started to affect my walking and there was a neurologist who had just moved to my area. He had moved from out of state and he was, he was proposed to be the dystonia expert. So I went to see him and after we talked and after he did an exam, it became apparent that the only treatment that he had to offer was Botox. And he actually didn't recommend taking any sort of medication because he felt that there were side effects and that it typically wasn't tolerated very well by patients. And so again, I was disappointed because I felt that there weren't any other options. He didn't really seem interested in exploring any other options. And when I brought up, were there any alternative treatments? He seemed to dismiss them and say, you know, we could try, but I don't really think they're going to be effective. So naturally, again, I, I was disappointed um, and kind of left on my own to figure out what type of treatment was going to work best for me. Now, when I talk about Botox and medication, I wanna be clear that it's not that I disagree with taking these. In fact, I think that for some patients, especially when you're dealing with symptoms that cause a lot of pain or are really affecting your day-to-day -day life, they have their role, they have their place. Um, so I don't want to make it sound like I'm anti-Botox or medication because I do think that they can help be beneficial for people and their symptoms. For me, I was looking for something more holistic. However, the fact that patients are shuffled through the medical system, providers don't often have the time to be able to spend with patients to look at alternative treatments. Two, there's often more funding for prescription drugs. And sometimes, I, I think quite simply, it's hard for providers to change the way that they practice. I once heard that it can take up to 30 years for the standard of practice to change. And when we think about that, that's a long time. I feel that, I feel that evidence is changing, that treatment is evolving, particularly as it pertains to dystonia, and that over the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, that our treatment options are going to look much different. Fortunately for me, early on in my symptom development, I came across Joaquin Farias's work, and this truly provided me the first hope that I could manage my symptoms or in the long term, make a complete recovery from. I learned that the dystonia symptoms that I was experiencing weren't just physical symptoms, and in fact, weren't just symptoms coming from the brain,
but that involved the complexity of the entire nervous system. And again, in understanding this and understanding neuroplasticity, I truly believed that I could become completely asymptomatic over the course of, of many weeks to months. I do believe that a team approach is the best approach when it comes to making a recovery from dystonia. So this could entail working with a neurologist, working with a physical therapist, working with a dietitian or a psychologist, or any other number of healthcare practitioners that can help you be able to navigate what's important in terms of reducing symptoms. Because anything that causes stress to the nervous system can play a role in our symptoms. So therefore, we need to be able to look at dystonia as something that where we're going to we're going to need multiple perspectives on how to how to be able to handle this and how to be able to attack the condition from different angles so for example we might find that our work is causing quite a bit of stress so it would be worthwhile to work with someone to be able to help navigate what to do in those situations when they're stressful or talk to our employer, of course, and see if there's things that we can do to reduce reduce the workload. Again, because it plays such an important, because stress plays such an important role on our symptoms. We might find that we're not sleeping well. So working with someone that can help us develop better sleep habits would be beneficial uh, for our recovery. We might need to work with a physical therapist that can establish an exercise routine to help us develop better fluidity in our movements. And of course, we can work with a psychologist that can help us day to day manage our symptoms, especially the emotional side of our symptoms, because dystonia really does, it does affect us. It's changed our life. And so having someone that, having someone that can help support us can be critical. And someone that can recognize maybe past life events or even current events and how they affect our nervous system can can be worthwhile. So I hope you can see that this really does take a team approach to recovery. And it's not that we can work on all these things at once. In fact, it would be impossible to pick apart each, you know, each one of these systems or body systems or brain body systems and to work on them all at a given time. It would just be too time consuming. But what I'm saying is that we might find that there are certain seasons in our life where we feel that we need to focus on one aspect of our life, such as sleep or stress or exercise, and then move kind of from that treatment to another. And then over the months, we, we figure out what works the best for us and eventually we'll start to see a reduction in our symptoms. So I hope that gives a little clarity on the medical system and dystonia. Just know that, again, things are evolving, things are changing, that there are other options out there for treatment, and that if we can establish, most likely if we can establish a team of clinicians to work with us, that that will provide the best outcome. So again, hope that provides a little bit of clarity on that, and thanks for watching.